All right, hey everyone. Um, last night, Isaiah was like, "Dude, I'm working with Copilot in GitHub, and it's crazy." So, I said, "Let's let's do a short video on it." Right. They have been pushing that thing off my throat for the past few months. Every time I join, it says like, "Hey, try Copilot, try Copilot." Well, and now you know first, why. No, but here's the thing: the first time they pushed it, I remember it being really expensive. It was like thirty dollars a month. But then I said, like, let me check. When I went, it was like ten dollars a month. And there was a free month available. I said, all right, yeah, yeah. let me try it. So here's the interesting part. Um, it goes ahead and predicts what you are going to type. But here's the weird thing. It is grabbing your whole script as the context. So not only that, let's say that I start with static. Say my new function, my new function. Now. I created this check parameters function a while back, which um, I pass it an array, and it checks if the parameters are of the same type that I'm expecting. So it just checks my parameters. And I wanted to do that just to make something a little bit easier for me. So now I create a new function. Um, yeah, I already know what you're saying. Yeah. So param2, yeah. param3. And, test for and all now them. I want to test for all those parameters. So I right. say, and how I did it before was params equals and i was going to create an array it already writes the thing for me you see that all of that funny thing i did that once so i'm part in another function and now it already gives me and not only that it suggests the correct parameter names here you right, see that? Sure. Yeah. which is the amazing now you hit tab you have your code and sometimes well this one is not a string. This one right. is not an integer. I can right. just do that. But funny thing, let's do that again. Now, param2 plus equals 10, param3 dot equals, um, this is the test, um, and return param2. So I just did some code here. Now I want to check my values. And here's the interesting part. When it suggests the thing now, when it suggests the thing, it changed the values of them. So param1 is now integer. It right. knows that it's an integer because I did math on it. But right. parameter 3, it made it a string because now it saw that I was using it as a string. So this thing is insane. Like it, it, yeah. it is not only simply suggesting something randomly. Sure. And for code that is repetitive like this, it's insane because I don't want to type one <laughs> individually. It just suggests the thing. Funny thing. This, let's say, let's say now that I want to um, create tests for that. Now, this is a two-module thing. You have to install. Um, Copilot has two different extensions. One that is the Copilot chat, and the other one that is Copilot itself. If you install chat, it will install Copilot automatically because Copilot chat cannot be without the other one. But if you install Copilot by itself, it's just the code suggestion like this. So the code suggestion allows you to just, you know, as you saw, it just suggests something. You can ignore it, keep typing, or you can just use it. But the chat here um, is what you expect. You have chat GPT on this side. You select some code, and now you have some commands. If you type the slash here, you have some basic commands here, explain the code, um, simplify the code, fix it, or basically create text for it. And I just select my function, and it will create some basic testing for that function. You don't have to use those commands. You can free and type whatever you want. But it's so cool that I can just right away type some things, and it would just go ahead and create my testing code for me. Now. Interestingly enough, which is the part, it is trying to write V1 code still. But here's the problem. Whenever you're doing the suggestion, as it is taking in your existing code as a template, it will write V2 code because it looks about the same as what you're typing. Right? Well, that was, that so was what simple. I said last night was I'm like, maybe we just bring in dummy code that we're not actually it's not part of it but it's v2 right. code so when it that starts right there yeah 
Right. Now, now that is the question. And then the, 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 I have a few questions, but I don't know the answers to them right now. Is okay, I know for a fact that it's taking the current um, file as your context, but I might assume that it is saving that context somewhere so that the next time I ask a question, it still knows what I have been doing for the past time, yeah. right? I don't know. So that means probably that I don't have to do what you're saying, like um, have possibly code there right. because right. it already has context from my previous interactions. And I can see my previous interactions. I have, you see here, I can open this one. And this is all I did last night. So that context should, I, I assume, would stay somewhere so that the next time I start a question, it would do something similar to what I have to type in. But of course, that might have limitations of it, right? So this thing, um, another thing that it does is that you can start a comment. And in that comment, uh, and this is for, look at that. You see this DLL call, SQLite being my new function? Right there, it is looking at what I have been doing for the past few calls. Look at that. It's just looking at what I have been doing. And now it is suggesting something very similar to what I have been doing, but is changing instead of the my new function here, instead of the SQLite ones that I have been doing, is suggesting my current function and then my parameters. You see what I mean? This saves so much time. Like I, I don't have to really think, especially when I'm going into new territory. Well, so and it can I, help remind you of what you normally want to do, but as humans, we often get sidetracked and forget to do right like right very likely so for example if i forgot to check for my parameters right. in right. the end it's just gonna go ahead and at some point right. if i uh, uh now here's the thing this one i have in display so as i mentioned these two things are separate one is the chat and one is the copilot feature so the copilot feature is the one that is auto suggesting stuff in here you can say document my function hit enter and now it would suggest what the next line is, oh. right? And then I hit enter, now the next line. And I can just write the whole thing like that. And then just finish there, I want it. That's my comment. It is, it is something, again, I'm saying, I, not everybody will, want to pay for this not everybody needs to pay for this but if you're coding and your main part of coding like the whole day you're coding i don't think why you shouldn't pay for this right now there are a lot of extensions that are like you know um do something similar to this but of course vs code is from microsoft GitHub belongs to Microsoft as well. They built a an extension that integrates the two very well. So I definitely think, you know, if you're, and, and the pricing is not horrible. I, I, I saw like, for example, ChatGPT4 is like what? $30 a month, $29 20. a month, right. like $20 a month. That's what they were charging at the beginning of it. But it seems to me that they, or, or that's what I remember. I don't know well, if that was the case. I, I don't think we actually shared it anywhere, but uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, I sent you guys a screenshot of like 20% of um, um, Git's employees were like that, wasn't it? With, with Git, I think, remember? There was a screenshot. Uh, yeah, like, I remember. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, Stack Overflow. That's what it was, Stack right? Stack Overflow, yeah. But um, I think because uh, a crazy amount of people are adapting, and you lower the price enough where you're like, absolutely it's worth it right but um, I, it, I definitely think so yeah and the only thing to, to take into account is like as we said too this is the worst it's ever going to be it's only going to get better right and, and like you said it doesn't even know v2 of auto hockey but it's still yeah. even because you've done stuff in it it's adapted i'm getting back to the whole is it using other files like if they were smart i would say they would look at the other extensions at least within your right. contract and say those i'm in this one i'm going to borrow them heavier i'm going to weight that more than the other ones Right. And then something with recency of what you've worked on last and other stuff. But right. yeah, that's very now, cool. now, here's my thing. There's a bunch of functions that I wanted to port. Right. I just started with the basic ones. But as soon as I want to start with another one, 
especially if I don't know it that well. I can just start with with my um, static here. Then I put the name of my function, and it will definitely, as it goes, figure out what it's going to do. So I start with my um, um, DLL call, and it would right away put what I have to put there. And funny thing, those parameters that you're looking at in there, I, let me see. Let me see what it does. So static. Uh, let, let's start with a comment. Um, create function open from. So let me put that. Um, that's it. And let's. Um, static SQLite. There it goes. Here, check this out. You see those parameters that it is suggesting there? It is from the actual function. Well, yeah, it's it, not. This is the V two one, no. but it does it. Here it is. Notice that the V two down there. Those are if you go to the documentation from that function, those are the parameters that you're going to get. So if I go to SQLite open, so SQLite um, 3, I think I have report, open v2. When you look at that for the v2 one, you have the file name, the pointer to the database, the flags, and the thing. Those are the four parameters that you get. When you do that, you are getting those guys, it is, yeah. it's, it's, it's extremely, I'm surprised, right? And and you remember that ChatGPT has been trained on the internet. So it has a lot of information from the yeah. internet. Right. So there's a lot of things. And, and this one here is interesting because on the original function is PPDV, but ChatGPT has noticed that that one, I have been consistently changing it to the <laughs> So it is consistently changing it to yeah. PSQLite. So nice. it's giving me the, the other error. ones as yeah, it's yeah. found it, but yeah. that it's, one it's is interpreted changing. yeah, and adapted it to your preference. To my use. And that yeah. definitely is very close to what I'm looking for. Very so, cool. so, you know, it is, I would say, again, if you're not playing with this, well, at, any chance you get, to, even if yeah. it's a free trial, or whatever, just play with it. To figure out how, how what the current state of the things are right now, somebody who has no idea about coding can definitely create a working program in less time than it took us a few years back, right? So, so well, but that begs the question this. too of how much is it borrowing from your code versus general knowledge, right? Um, and of it's course, we're still stuck. the two. That's the, yeah. that's the weird thing. It's right. But I'm just saying, so if someone's a noob and they don't program at all in AutoHotKey, it may not be quite as, as good with AutoHotKey, right? I think with the SQLite stuff, absolutely, because there's a plethora of, of data about that, right? But um, regardless, me, still, it, and it's just going to improve again. Let me let me show you something right now. It's just happening. So I created the static new here. I created all my functions. It is suggesting that I create the delete version of it. Now, for that, it has to know that I'm doing out of hotkey v1 or v2 because it is something that happens in out of hotkey. I just forgot to do it or I haven't done it yet, right? Not only that, it so so it knows that it's out of hotkey, that I should do it, it knows that I haven't done it. And it's not taking it from my code. My code here does not have a. I don't anywhere. understand your jump to saying how it knows it's auto. How how is how other languages don't re need a delete? No, no, they, they, they would not. They would not use that keyword. That one keyword that this dash dash delete is. I have only seen it on on our hotkey. Other other languages use other keywords like the structure or the init or something like that, but not the word delete. And it knows, OK, I'm going to suggest you the delete. You know what you should do in there? Free your library, which you loaded at the beginning, which is this one here. So not only is suggesting something that I have to do anyways, I didn't do it because I know that Arapaki does it for me if I put it, right? Yeah. But it knows that I loaded the library. It knows that I have to free it. And it knows that it has to be on the delete function. 
Yeah, I'd still say, though, I mean, we don't know how much of that is from you have a robust GitHub library predominantly in. I understand what you mean. So from my GitHub account that I have a lot of hotkey code, probably taking that from there, too. Yes. So I'm just saying, I don't know if if I was someone new that's never done this, if it would be offering. Yeah. Like, who who knows? Right. It, It Hopefully it does. Hopefully it looks at the extension, which is probably your by far best indicator of what you're doing, right? I I did notice that in the extension settings, um, it did tell me, let me see if it's this one here. Why don't you create a text Save. file and start putting some of the same code? Like a new text file. Yeah. And then start putting on a hot text. Right. Yeah. So let's say... Um, File open. I know. I know that in plain text, it's not going to suggest stuff because that's one of the things that it gives. All right. Well, we'll put it put it a, a JavaScript file and start putting right. auto code. That would be weird. Yes. That that would be. So here it is. The copilot cannot be enabled in plain text, or you can put it. You can make it true. And make it true here. And now I get that. Okay. Fine. So file open. Um, um, this is, I will open here, file open that as ETF. But, but don't, don't do, do me a favor. Don't, don't do a database SQL. Let's do a generic. No, no, this is, okay. So Cause I don't want to, I don't want to get caught up on like, what well, was it that last file you did? Right. You know, which I assume they would wait higher. Is if I was doing it, I would sure be looking at the most recently. Okay, the so that the hmm, okay, that one is not out of hotkey code right there. Now, file open is very common to all of them. Let's look for one that. Yeah, how would it know? Um, so first of all, let's say message box. Um, let's make it through. use some of the built-in auto hotkey variables for like the a underscore whatever. Also somewhere right. There. So okay, okay, so let's do. A H K um, version, and then um, let's see what. So I have the message box for that. Then if A is not so A is happening, right? Then we're gonna message box. Okay, true here. Else, okay, that's false. Then. Um, Loop, parse. Huh. That is auto hotkey code right there. Hmm. So that now is, has the A script name, which is probably not what I want. But this is V1 code. Yeah, I was, right? yeah. Right. But it, from this piece of code, it already suggested something that is valid out of hotkey code. Yeah. Even though not for that, not, not for the one that I need. Right. So let's try. Just one thing Again, here. We know, yeah. Right. So then I say requires uh, hotkey. Okay. Did something there. Um, B2 plus. And then from there, run. Huh. That's B1 code, though. Yeah, that I doubt one code. It, it doesn't weight that requires thing as much as it should because that, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Real intelligence. But, uh, and even if it would, it doesn't have auto hotkey code. Now, yeah, yeah. The V2, <laughs> the V2 one at least, but the V2 is taking it from my files. But the V1 code, it's taking it from its memory because it has been trained on that. Right. So if I have a blank file like this, it would default to our hotkey V1. Right. But if you already wrote some V2 code, it would start guessing what the things are. So this is extremely interesting, actually. And I, I will keep playing with it. Oh, yeah. Um, Very cool. My, my next test would be, um, you see the the JSON library that um, some people have wrote, like TP and so on? I'm planning on, I don't know that much C code. I'm going to try to. I'll have ChatGPT help me create a function that does a JSON parsing in C so that I could then create it to machine code so that we have another hotkey wrapper for the C code, so, so for the C that function would, in machine code. 
kind of like what that. Geek Dudes does. I thought Geek Dude was in Machine. Yes, he's doing that. But my my way is just I want to test it. Sure. Yes. See yeah. If ChatGPT comes up with something yeah. meaningful, right? Cool. But yeah, that's what he's trying to do. Uh, and uh, is there any like copyright issue? He's uh, that copilot that has access all to our codes. <laughs> that is that is a good question. Now here's the thing: they are having debates about that, right? When I installed it, there was a checkbox saying, do you want Copilot to send your snippets or share your snippets to to the um, to their servers so that they can share it? And there was another thing that I had to accept that um, whether I wanted to use snippets from the public domain. So those two things, I had to accept both. I had to accept of Copilot using the public stuff, or, and and sorry, at the same time, also accept that my snippets would be shared. Now, what they're doing with that, like, are they training their AI with that? Are they yeah. using it? Are there like, going to be just, any? Just, that, just think about, just think about, there are thousands of people coding and everyone else, oh, yeah. like, code oh, yeah. a different way. Yeah. And they will right. have all the data, and now they can have an AI that can generate any kind of code, like just combine two or three minds together and you have a brilliant mind and they are combining thousands of minds together. Right. So, what will be so, the result? So you can imagine. Is... So so everyone yeah. is uh, that is using like this co-pilot understanding, understanding their way how they code, exactly. so how they achieve their goals. <laughs> now, that's it. Uh, it that is the debate right now. Like, is that is that something that would constitute copyright infringement? Uh, some people don't like it. Some people now, I just think it's inevitable. It doesn't matter what they do. They can they can cry. They can roll in the floor. AI is a thing that is going to happen, whether they like it or not. Um, whether there will be limitations, well, we will see. I don't know how that's going to work, and because. I think AI is growing so fast that I listened. Uh, I, I listened to a news recently that there in the United States was the first bill passed that had some um, some restrictions for AI use. I just think it passed uh, on the lower house. I guess it hasn't passed like fully. No, but uh, they I'm are not... debating on that still. Still I'm not against working. AI, but at least they can do that. AI would tell that I am writing that code inspired from the Zayas, <laughs> inspired from the code of Zayas. Yeah, I, that I'm is possible. I'm going to tell you something about that. No, no, that I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I'm going to tell you something about that. Um, that is totally important. The first time I, cre I created the the um, Scintilla library, my Scintilla library had. A very unique thing. You could call the functions, or you can call the ID of the function with the with a number, right? And that was something that I I thought about it. And I was like, ah, oh, that's weird. I have never seen a fun a, a library doing that. I just did it because it was easy for me. Fine. Years later, I talked to you, Joe, and you told me, hey, Maestrith is here. He's very cool. He did this, he did that, and he and he also has a Scintilla library. When I look at his library was so similar to mine that I said, hold on, did he wrap my library and modify it? Okay. And then he's and, and then I I wrote the Scintilla Lexer in C at that time for Arohaki. And then talking to Maester, he says, oh yeah, I created my own Lexer, uh, uh, the, the Scintilla Lexer. And then I saw that his C Lexer had exactly the same name as mine. And exactly the same number of the library too, and I was like, "No way!" He, he just copied the code and used it. But then he sent me his library, and he gave me his C plus plus code. And when I looked at it, totally different. Somehow, we came back with the same out of hot key library, the same functionality, the <laughs> same numbers, <laughs> but we did it separate. That is something that it happens all the time, and you cannot really tell me AI is going to determine this was inspired from one person oh, or the other. 
because two people can't come up with the same idea twice. Yeah, here's, so here's mention, the other thing, mention their both of their names. <laughs> but no, here, here's the, here's the other thing. But Irfan, who you're also, I think, overestimating is how much data is behind this. It, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of things that that led into that generation, right? How would you cite? the hundreds of thousands of people that are actually because yeah maybe that specific on the scintilla library it was a little bit heavier weighted on some of those from those two but there's eighty thousand other things they also borrowed for in putting that one example together right like it's just if it's you want chat gpt always citing the sources you would have hundreds of files that have hundreds of thousands of names every single time yeah I mean, that is impossible like that 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 that, that doesn't make right. much sense because the weighting that each individual yeah. thing is is very low compared to what you you would think, right? Like it's right. I've done enough of the data science stuff just to know, like that's that's how it goes. There's the the whole learning of the language, right, and then adapting. But anyway, let's let's not go there in this video. So um, that was yeah. a great demo, or uh, Isaiah's very interesting. I, I do say like yeah, we'll look at it for us to uh, maybe even for both you guys to get that uh, to uh, something that we can have because it'll obviously help us develop code faster for our clients. So thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers. Like the video if you learned something.